Good afternoon, and welcome to the Cathedral Basilica of St. James. Today we celebrate St. Matthew, Apostle and Evangelist. Our opening hymn is number 887, By All Your Saints Still Striving, number 887. to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, as we gather together today on the feast day of St. Matthew, Apostle and Evangelist, let us acknowledge our sins that we may better enter into the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Thank 
Let us pray. O God, who with untold mercy were pleased to choose as an apostle St. Matthew the tax collector, grant that sustained by his example and intercession, we may merit to hold firm in following you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. One body and one Spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all, and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. And he gave, gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers to equip the holy ones for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood to the extent of the full stature of Christ. The word of the Lord.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the customs post. He said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. The Pharisees saw this and said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? He heard this and said, those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn the meaning of the words, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the The common word we find in both of the scripture readings today on the Feast of St. Matthew is the word call. Our Lord says, I did not come to call the righteous but sinners. And St. Paul urges the Ephesians to live worthy of the call they have received to be Christians in their baptism. Our Lord says he has come to call sinners. Now the word call doesn't simply mean to convey a message, it really means to ask someone to go above and beyond. It's a challenge to do more. We speak of a call to arms, a call to serve, a a, a roll call. It always implies that there is more that the person is being asked to do. This is the call that Christ gives. He comes and eats with sinners, not to tell them they're doing just fine and keep going as they are, but rather to call them forward out of sin into a new way of life, to leave behind what has mired them, as Matthew does, in fact, leaves behind his truly dishonest way of life in order to take up Christian discipleship, in fact, apostleship, even more martyrdom, and certainly evangelizing through the gospel. St. Paul does the same thing. He's telling the Ephesians, you've been baptized, yes, but you have more to do. You have to be worthy of that call. You have to live that call. You have to really do what the Holy Spirit has given you the power to do. And then he lists the manner in which they should manifest that. And really, it's, it's a good catalog, almost a repetition of the fruits of the Holy Spirit that he mentions in the letters, letter to the Galatians. Humility, patience, gentleness, love, faith, peace. And above all, he talks about unity. Unity with our neighbor, yes, based on the fact that we are in union with Christ through baptism, part of the body of Christ. And it all goes toward the same end. St. Paul says that what we are striving for is that unity of faith, knowledge of the Son of God, mature personhood, the full stature of Christ that we bear because we are part of the mystical body. This is really talking about complete union with Christ in the life to come the eschatological promise, the beatific vision, life on high in God in heaven because we have been faithful to the calling we have received. Let us pray today on the Feast of St. Matthew that we will answer that call, that we will strive our best to live up to that call, knowing that the Lord will always give us the grace we need in order to do so.
Let us pray. For the church, may God help each one of us live in a manner worthy of the call we have received. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For those elected by the people to govern and lead, for all who hold position of authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For expectant parents, may they be blessed with good health and support as they ready themselves to welcome new life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For we who worship and share community here, that we may grow in those gifts of the Holy Spirit of which St. Paul speaks in today's reading. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Jonah Good, for whom this Mass is offered, may they enter the heavenly Jerusalem and achieve the full stature of Christ, joining the angels and saints in giving glory to God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God and Father of us all, you love saint and sinner. Hear our prayers with your tender mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we celebrate in you the memory of St. Matthew, we bring you sacrifices and prayers, O Lord, humbly imploring you to look kindly on your church, whose faith you have nourished by the preaching of the apostles through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. James, St. Matthew, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lead me, guide me. Number 712. Stray. 
Let us pray. Sharing in that saving joy, O Lord, with which St. Matthew welcomed the Savior as a guest in his home, we pray. Grant that we may always be renewed by the food we receive from Christ, who came to call not the just, but sinners to salvation, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for God's blessing. May God, who has granted you to stand firm on apostolic foundations, graciously bless you through the glorious merits of the Holy Apostle Matthew. Amen. And may he who endowed you with the teaching and example of the apostles make you, under their protection, witnesses to the truth before all. Amen. So that, through the intercession of the apostles, you may inherit the eternal homeland, for by their teaching you possess firmness of faith. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. The closing hymn is number 810, Wherever He Leads. Number 810. <laughs> Take up thy cross.